Right now what I want to talk to you about is mortgage interest as a deduction in Canada. And I'm going to start off with a little segment saying, is it legal? And I'm going to sort of read from something that I hand out at seminars. And I have to tell you that I've done this particular two pages at, for over 6,000 people at seminars in Toronto, Calgary, Victoria, Vancouver, Nanaimo, Langley in the last year and a half. Uh, coming up close to two years. But we start in August 2008 is the first day that I presented this. And I'm going to um, sort of give it to you as I've written it down. I'll make some sideways things here. And I hear the phone ringing. It may just be somebody has a question. Yep. Now, you can find out how to make mortgage interest, car interest, boat interest, and just about any other interest deductible on your Canadian income tax return by going to www.centa.com. That's www.centa.com and reading the November 2001 newsletter in the top left-hand corner. And the November 2001 newsletter is about 12 pages and uh, it uh, is uh, heavily read. I think it's been downloaded some 3,800 times the last time I looked. Uh, we have mailed out over the years over 3,000 copies as well. And it's just sort of one of those things that keeps on going on and on and on and on. And here's the November 2001 newsletter. And I, it's free for you to go and take a look at center.com. Top left hand corner, November 2001. And I'm going to refer to that too as we go along. Well, I first conceived and I lay claim to being the first person in Canada ever to put in writing how to make a Canadian mortgage deductible, just like in the States. In fact, I have to tell you that when you deduct a Canadian mortgage, the interest on a Canadian mortgage, because you made the mortgage uh, a business deductible mortgage or an investment deductible mortgage, it is a better deduction than it is in the States. Because in the United States, you lose your standard deduction. So if you've got a 50-year-old couple with a couple of kids, they normally get about an $11,000 standard deduction. If they have a $200,000 mortgage at 5%, to claim the 5% interest of $10,000 of interest, then they get to claim the property taxes and so on, they give up the standard $11,400 deduction for them that they get just as a standard deduction. So if you had $3,000 worth of property taxes and $10,000 worth of interest and a couple of other minor things, you might end up with itemized deductions of about thirteen and a half or $14,000 but all you're really getting is a $3,000 deduction because you give up the 11400 In Canada, if you've got the $10,000 worth of interest that's deductible, it's $10,000 deductible on top of all your standard deductions. Far better, much better deduction in Canada. It's just harder to make it happen. So I first conceived of this in 1976 and published it in November 2, uh, 1976 in the North Shore News in a newsletter from the North Shore Credit Union. And it was uh, gangbusters at the time, and everybody got interested in it. And for a brief period of time, I had literally three, 400 people that set up their affairs to make their mortgage deductible. And then it just died, and I don't know why, because it was there. I kept on talking about it and pushing about it. I've likely mentioned it at over 3,000 seminars. That's that many seminars that I've done, and radio programs and television programs and so on. It's been amazing. Anyway, the reason that I figured it out was pretty simple. I had a client, uh, and the client had a duplex. And in the duplex, he had a tenant, and the tenant was in a car accident. And the tenant in the car accident um, didn't pay their rent for a while. Uh, it was a couple of years that they didn't pay the rent. But my client liked the tenant, and the tenant was in a rough situation, and he kept on letting her, it was a she, stay in the place without paying their rent. And in the case of while they were doing this, he had to borrow money from the bank on a line of credit to make the payments on his duplex and pay the property taxes and the interest and so on. And these loans were purely, purely made to uh, carry the expenses of a business rental property. And the fact is, you know, he could only deduct half of them, but it was still a deduction. 
And at the end of a couple of years, she got an insurance settlement from what the new company called ICBC, and she paid him his two years, 24 months, whatever it was, back rent. And he phoned me and he said, David, he said, I've got this loan that we've, that's deductible, he said, and I was always intending to pay it when I got the rent, but do I have to? And we discussed what else he could do with this money. He could buy a boat, he could take a vacation to Hawaii, he could do almost anything with it, or he could pay off this business loan. And I said, no. I said, it doesn't make any sense to pay off the business loan. I think what he did is he paid off his car loan, which wasn't deductible either. But it doesn't matter. That's where I conceived and put in writing in November 76 the uh, concept of making your mortgage interest deductible. And then I realized it was possible for anybody to do that. For instance, this fellow, I'll call him George, wasn't his name, but I then told George, well, why don't you just keep on doing that? Why don't you just keep on borrowing money every month to make the payments on this rental duplex and take the rent that you've got coming in and use it for some other things that you're doing that aren't deductible? And that's what he did, and we came up with this concept. So let me use a couple of other examples. We can use the example of a dentist in a private practice. doesn't work if the dentist has been silly and gone out and incorporated. But if you've got a dentist that's grossing, say, $200,000 a year, not an awful lot of money for a dentist, and the dentist happens to have a $200,000 mortgage on his house, the dentist could take all the money coming in from his practice and he could pay down the mortgage on the house. So over here he starts off, there's this $200,000 mortgage that isn't deductible, and here he's got a line of credit. And the line of credit secured against the house, but at this point he's got a $200,000 mortgage. Well, the first month if he takes in $10,000 and pays it down on this line on the mortgage, the equity went up $10,000 because he's paid it. So if he goes to the bank and says, look, I need $8,000 to pay my receptionist and pay the office rent and pay for some hygienist supplies and this kind of thing, they can give him or loan him $8,000 or $9,000, maybe even the whole ten, and for the second charge that they've got against the house because he's got more equity. So now he's got $10,000 or $8,000 or $7,000, and the interest on that's deductible. And then the next month he does another $10,000 or $15,000 with the business, and he takes it and he pays this amount down here. Now he only owes 180000 or 175 or something, but he's got to pay his receptionist, his rent, his dental hygienist, and the, or the, the um, fellow who made the crowns for him and so on. So he borrows 14000 at the bank, and his line of credit has gone from 10000 to 24000 But his debt over here has gone from 200000 down to 175000 He still owes about $200,000. But now, this month, the interest on the whole two hundred on this twenty five thousand or twenty four thousand dollars is deductible. Next month, he takes in twenty thousand dollars, pays us down by twenty thousand dollars, borrows twenty thousand here because he's got to pay his receptionist, got to pay the rent, got to pay his yellow page advertising, got to pay all that. If he does this for a year, year and a half, at the end of that time, he's got a loan up here now that's two hundred thousand dollars, every cent of which was borrowed to pay business expenses. The, it's called expensive damming, and that interest is now deductible, the deduction on here. Now, if it's only a $200,000 mortgage and the interest rate is 5%, and he's a dentist, you've got to think about it. When he's got 5% uh, on $200,000, that's $10,000 worth of interest. If it isn't deductible, he's got to make $18,000 and pay $8,000 worth of tax to have $10,000 left to make the deduction. If it's deductible, he pays the same $10,000, and gets a $2,000, $4,000 tax refund. So instead of having to make $10,000, he's only got to make six or seven or five or something like that. And in fact, if he's a self-employed dentist, what happens is he ends up in the situation where he would have had to do like $70,000 for the business and pay uh, $50,000 with the receptionist and other expenses back to have $20,000 left to pay the tax, to have $10,000 left to pay the interest on the mortgage. It's now deductible. So that's just a point and something that you should think about. You know, making mortgage deductible is easy to do. I'm going to carry on and do a few more things about it. But there's something for you to think about that's very serious and easy to do. You can find details at November, the November 2001 newsletter at www.senta.com. Top left-hand corner, click on newsletters, click on 2001, click on November. You'll get it.